Uh, hello everyone, I'm back again for another Blu-ray update. Uh, Blu-ray in 4K, I've got one 4K. Uh, I'll just get to it, right to it. So here's the 4K, we have the US Apocalypse Now 6 disc box set uh, on 4K. Uh, I had the UK standard 4K, which was, it was the final cut edit of the movie. There's three cuts, there's the theatrical, the redux or redo, what I was supposed to say, and uh, the final cut, and uh, it was fine, you know, I got it for Christmas, and it was nice, and the picture quality was really nice, and it came with uh, Heart of Darkness, the making of documentary, so, you know, it was a decent disc, but uh, of all, like, I've seen all three versions, I think my favourite, I, 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 the one I like to watch is the theatrical, I think that's the best version, so I really wanted to get that, and there was a box set in the UK, that was six discs and had all three cuts on 4K, plus, a, you know, another disc of extras. But that went out of print. It was only limited. But uh, in America, you can still get it. So I just imported it. It was only about 20 quid, which is around what the UK version, just the standard Final Cut version, costs. So if you want the film on 4K, just import it from the States. It'll cost the same amount of money. The same amount of money, really. Um, so it comes in a tray there. There's the digital copy. Uh, which is pretty useless because it uh, only works in America, and uh, I live in England, so oh, there, there's all the discs. I, uh, I swapped the, uh, the the final cut was the first disc. But I swapped them around because uh, they got the disc with the the theatrical and redux, which I keep on top because again the theatrical is the version I'm going to watch. So and then the Blu-rays and the two bonus discs. We have the special features. Di disc and then Heart of Darkness underneath. Now you might be wondering, uh, Phil, uh, where's the outer box? You know, because it's a digipack. It come in an outer box, right? Well, no, actually, this didn't come with an outer box. Um, what you mean, uh, the uh, you got it used and it was missing? No, 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 no. It it doesn't come with an outer box at all. Uh, there's no. It's just a digipack like this. It, the only thing really keeping it, holding it together, was it came with one of those J-card, you know, the card backing things with the little flaps on the top and bottom, which I threw away because I hate those, and they get on my nerves. But no, no, out of box. Like, uh, I'll just, uh, this isn't part of the update, I'm just getting it as an example. Like my Blade Runner box set. Look, it, you know, you got that. It comes open like that, so you have a you know, a box decided into to keep it safe, but uh, who put this out? Lionsgate. Someone at Lionsgate uh, thought it was a good idea not to bother doing that, which is kind of annoying. Not, not a fan of the packaging, but uh, it's fine, it's fine. It, it, it can, it'll stay, it, if I keep it, you know, um, uh, the discs are secure, kind of, it, it's, it's, I, I'm not as bothered by it as other people are, um, but it is it is kind of silly. You know, like, it's why they didn't bother doing it. But anyway, yeah. Uh, so definitely a recommended release. Shame of the packagings could be a lot better, but uh, there you are. You know, at least, the, at least it's got the discs on those trays instead of, like, those cardboard sleeves that, you know, can end up scratching them to shit. I hate those, that kind of packaging. Uh, anyway, so moving on, next we have a film, uh, I got this second hand, we have 500 Days of Summer, this is a rental copy, it doesn't mention the extras, but it actually does have them on the disc, for some reason it doesn't, uh, this is rental disc, so it's not like they put the wrong disc in, I don't know why, I guess they didn't list them on the back to make people think, um, it didn't have the extras from the retail version, so that, um, you know, if you like, you see a second-hand copy, you see it in, like, an ex-rental copy, you, instead of buying that, you'll buy the retail version. I don't know, maybe there, but, um, yeah. Um, this came out when I was disappointed in this, kind of, because uh, this came out when I was, was it 2009, I think? 2009, yeah. So I was about 14 when this came out. And I have a feeling that had I watched this when it was new, because I hadn't seen this before till last week when I bought this, uh, or a few years later, basically when I was a teenager. 
I think I would have really loved this film. I would have loved the 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 style. I think it really would have resonated with me. But seeing it for the first time now as a twenty six year old, I still thought it was a good film. But I I feel like I, I've outgrown it. Like um, it it doesn't it doesn't have the same impact. Like um, you know, since I was fourteen, I've seen like obviously, um, I think the filmmaking style they use in this. I probably would have thought it was really clever and innovative and like, oh, this is this is brilliant. But I've seen the sort of movies that this patterned itself after, like Annie Hall and all those kinds of things So since then. So, you know, it's not as impressive as it might have been to me at that age. And uh, also just the, the, the main character. Uh, like, his the way Hannah's relationship, like, um, I, had I been a teenage and this emotionally mature, I think I would have, you know, probably sympathised with him a lot more than I do watching it. Like, I mean, uh, confession, I've never actually had a girlfriend myself, but I'm emotionally mature enough as a 26-year-old to know that this isn't how you handle a, a relationship despite not having, you know, been in one myself. So, yeah, I don't know. So... It was a good film, but I really wish I'd seen it earlier in life when it probably would have had more of an impact on me. So I do regret not seeing it when it was new. That's the trouble is, I've always been more into the classic cinema. Classic era of cinema. So something like Apocalypse Now, something older. Um, so I never really bothered watching a lot of the, the, the um, modern movies when I was younger. So there's a lot of good ones that I just missed out on that I really am only just now catching up with, which, you know, it's, I just feel kind of silly about, because again, some of them I probably would have quite enjoyed when I was younger, but uh, oh, uh, never mind. Uh, anyway, I will probably sell that on, actually. Uh, here's another one I'll I'll be selling on. We have the French Digibook of Patton, a uh, World War II film, obviously based on the life of uh, General Patton. Really great film. Uh, this is the French one. I got. I saw this on eBay. I'll tell you why I was disappointed. I saw this on eBay and uh, uh, showed a picture of the back. And based on the um, my very limited French, I could see that it has the you know the Blu-ray movie and then a bonus DVD with like documentaries and stuff. In the UK, the Blu-ray only has the movie disc. So I thought, oh. Comes with an extra features disc and you know it's digi book. I mean it's French writing, but still it's kind of cool packaging. I don't own any digi books, so it'd be nice to have one because uh, we never got them really in the UK. They were more of an American thing, so and I guess French too. So yeah, and um, so I, I bought it and uh, it arrived and well, first of, I mean I knew this going in, but it's the for those wondering it's the bad pattern transfer, the original Blu-ray of pattern was notorious for having a lot of uh, digital noise reduction and it it's like one of the notorious for being like one of the worst looking blu-rays i mean it's still better than the dvd there was a remastered version but it was only ever released in the states every other country we got even though all blu-ray came out after the remastered version did we all got the old disc uk france everywhere so i knew it was going to be the bad disc i didn't mind that i just thought it was you know it wasn't that expensive and it came that cool packaging and it came with a bonus dvd so i get it comes with a Blu-ray and it does come with a DVD but I don't know if you can see there disc one it is you know so uh, it is just a DVD copy of the film even though the back said the bonus DVD with documentaries and stuff so I, I don't know what happened I don't know whether the guy this is what the person I bought it off whether they bought maybe they bought this and this is how it was and that's maybe why they're selling it or they put for some reason they put it in there. I mean, I don't think I could return it because I, you know, because uh, this thing just said Blu ray and DVD, which is what is in here. So there's no, it's not like I was, you know, um, he was tricking me or anything. It's just so there, so or she, I don't know if it was a man or a woman I bought it from actually. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's disappointing. So because uh, you know, it's the bad transfer and I don't even get the extra disc. So yeah, I'm probably going to sell this Music Magpie. It'll give me the same amount I paid for it. Uh, minus the postage. So I'm probably just going to trade it to them. Because uh, it's disappointing, really. Uh, yeah. 
in mind. I, I do have a region free player, so I probably should just import the remastered uh, Blu ray from America. Uh, especially because Disney now, own, now owns Fox, and you never know when uh, they're going to just stop selling some of the old Fox movies on physical media. Because, uh, there's, there's, I mean, I don't think it's. Um, <laughs> I think it, it, some of it's sort of scaremongering. But, uh, yeah, it's possible. It's possible. I don't know. Um, in mind, but yeah, I, I can get the import the US disc for the remastered picture. I'll just I should have done that in the first place. Anyway, moving on. Next, we have a this was a birthday present, a belated birthday present. My birthday's in May. <laughs> don't know why I forgot that. Uh, but because of lockdown and stuff, the friend I got this from couldn't give it to me till this month, July. So yeah, we have uh. The Devil Rides Out, which is a hammer horror film about um, a satanic cult. Really good. It's one of the better hammer horror films. Definitely. If you've not seen any hammer horror films, this is a good one to start with. It's one of the best. Uh, this is the um, this is the UK disc, which has the... Basically, um, when they remastered this in HD, they uh, the restoration team, they, there were a few shots in this film, special effects shots. Where at the time, I guess because of production problems, they weren't finished. Like they're not. It's not like the effect they just weren't finished. So there were some unfinished effect shots in the original film, and the restore the restoration team decided to sort of finish them with CGI, which it's you know it's nice to see how it probably would have looked had the they had the chance to finish it. Um, there's you know. Uh, I mean, which um, I mean, some people uh just. For periods we can get up in arms about it for changing it, which I kind of see on the side. I don't mind them here so much. Um, the annoying thing is on the UK disc, it only has the, it with the updated effects. You can't watch the original version, which I don't agree with really. I mean, you should put both on there, plus especially because um, the sorts of people who are going to buy an old Hammer horror film on Blu-ray are the kinds of people who want it to be as it was originally, you know. So yeah, but still, it's a nice looking disc. It does have some, you know, nice extras like a making of documentary, a restore, restoration featurette, uh, uh, featurette about uh, Dennis Wheatley, the author, it's the guy who wrote the book this is based on, um, an episode of The World of Hammer, which was a, I think it was a documentary series about the Hammer films, uh, Stills Gallery, uh, and a commentary with Christopher Lee and uh, Sarah Lawson and Mark Cernsa. It's a decent release. In a Shout Factory in America put out a version which had both cuts, the original and the... Well, the original and the, this cut. The original cut on that actually the American print, which um, in America they called the film The Devil's Bride because they thought, the distributors thought The Devil Rides Out sounded too much like a western, so they called it The Devil's Bride. So not only do you get to see it with the original effect, you get to see it with the American title card, which is kind of neat, but... Uh, Shout Factory stuff is expensive, and I just I just wanted a copy of the film, you know, because I, I really like it, even if it isn't the original. So I just I just asked my friend if they could get me this, and they said yes. Yeah, so yeah, I'm quite happy with it. Maybe I'll get the the Ameri the Shout Factory release at some point, but um, like I say, those are expensive, so I think that'll do me for now. Uh, talking of expensive, um, now this uh, Arrow are releasing. Uh, David Lynch's version of Dune in is it September? I think or October later on this year on 4K and Blu-ray. Uh, it's limited editions. So you get it in like a steel book or like an outer box, like an outer box with booklet and different limited editions. There isn't a standard version yet. I'm assuming when all the limited ones sell out, we'll get like just like a standard movie only uh, release, not movie only, but like disc, just the discs in a regular case. Now, I had that on pre-order, but due to a mix of the fact that I didn't actually like the film very much, um, it's more that um, I feel a compulsion to own it. Like, I find it an interesting film. Like, it's kind of interesting to watch just from the point of view of um, just as a film, because it's, it's very... Um, it's a bad film, but it's kind of interesting. Like, it has some good stuff in it and um, just kind of weird and stuff. I don't, I find it interesting, so I, I want to own a copy of it, even though I don't actually like it. Um, and also, 
the, um, there was a feature length documentary that was going to be on it, but due to Arrow announced that due to um, it wouldn't be ready in time for the them when the disc was going to be manufactured, so they're leaving it off. So a mixture of those two things um, made me cancel, and the fact that it was it's quite expensive, and it so um, I think it's like thirty pound for the four K, which you know. Uh, it's, you know, for a film I don't like and is missing an extra that I was quite interested in, I, th I just cancelled it. And then I saw on eBay someone was selling this, the US disc from Universal, for I think it was like a fiver or something uh, like that. And yeah, I just got this because I thought, you know what, this is. Uh... I mean, I'm sure the, you know the. I think the picture quality on this isn't that bad. It's got a few extras. And you know, it's just a copy of the film that'll do me. Cheap. I'll probably get the 4K eventually when like it, the limited edition sells out, and there's a standard version, and the standard version's on offer or something like in one of those two for thirty offers in HMV. I'll probably get it then. But for now, this will do me. Uh, it is region free. I recommend like um, if you don't want to um, pay, get the error version because you think it's too expensive. Don't buy the UK release. You know, Universal UK. I don't remember who, but. There's a there's a there's a different the UK disc is different and it has a different extras and a different video transfer and the video transfer is worse than this so if you if you don't want to get the if you if you don't want to pay so much money for the arrow version you want a cheaper version get this one because it has better picture it's the best looking version at the moment until the arrow comes out so yeah and it is region free uh, special features are it's got Deleted scenes, they're not not the deleted scenes from the TV edit. They are other deleted scenes. The TV edit, um, there is a DVD of it. There, uh, there was an American DVD, which was basically what was on this Blu-ray on one side, and then on the other side it had the extended version on TV. The Alan Smithy cut, it was basically done... Uh, basically, for those who don't know, uh, the studio, I guess Universal, they made an extended cut of the film for TV airings so they could put more adverts on and David Lynch basically had nothing to do with it. In fact, he had his name taken off the TV edit. So it's credited to being directed by Alan Smithy, hence the Alan Smithy cut. And there was a DVD with this cover in America which had uh, the theatrical cut on one side and then the extended on the other. And there is a UK DVD which has the extended cut. So I probably can get it second hand. Uh, the American DVD... It was in widescreen on the UK disc. It was only 4x3 because it was a TV copy. Uh, the extended cut's not very good. It's kind of interesting to see just for the extra scenes, but um, they're really badly cut back in. Like the Fremen, they don't have the glowing blue eyes, uh, so you can tell what scenes are, are you know added back in. And just it's just really sloppily edited together. So I don't recommend the TV cut unless you're a completist. Um... But basically it has deleted scenes, designing Dune featurette, Dune effects, Dune models and miniatures, Dune wardrobe design, and apparently it's D-Box motion enabled, I don't know what that means, and there's DD Live but stuff, but I don't think that would work. I, I can't, my player's not connected to the internet anyway, so I can't watch BD Live stuff, so, but yeah. Dune, um, not a very good film, but kind of interesting. I am looking forward to seeing any Bill Nerves version in October. Really excited to see that. Um, next, we have. Uh, I just noticed the case on this is broken. Oh, shoot. Um, I have to get some spare cases, actually. Uh, the 40 year old virgin. Uh, yeah, I used to have this on DVD. Uh, I did quite like it. I'm not really usually into these sort of gross out comedies. Uh, but uh, this one's really good because underneath the sort of toilet humour, it's. Um, Quite a charming love story, I think. Um, yeah, good film. Quite funny. Uh, wanted to have it on Blu-ray. Especially because the DVD only had the extended cut. I guess unrated, I think, is it? Extended, yeah. Unrated cut. Uh, but the Blu-ray has the both, like, the extended and the theatrical. So I was kind of curious to see the theatrical, because I... Uh, uh, even though it's a good film, I think it's a bit too long for a comedy, so I'm wondering if the theatrical is the pacing better. Uh, so, yeah, it's got a lot of special features which are on the DVD, I think. There's uh, 
all your commentaries, deleted scenes. You know how I know you're gay. And is that like an extended version of the bit where it's Paul Rudd and um, the other guy? Like, you know, like the. Um, for those of you who've seen the film, you know which bit I'm talking about. Uh, Data Palooza, Lina Rama, Judd's video diaries. I guess that's Judd Apatow, the director's diaries, video diaries, auditions, raw footage, rehearsals, comedy reel round table. Cinemax, the final cut, the 40 year old virgin, uh, 70s sex ed film, My Dinner with Stormy, Gag Reel, and Waxing Dog. Oh, yeah, and there's some Blu ray picture in picture crap. I don't know. Um, yeah, so good film, even if you're not into this kind of like sort of sex, raunchy sex, you know, gross out comedy, uh, it's still a good film, I think. Uh, next, we have these next two films. Um, they're both from directors who are considered quite... They've both done... Um, you'll know what I mean when you see who they are, but basically they've both done three bad things. Uh, one of them definitely did what he's accused, like he admitted it. The other one is alleged. A lot of people um, are convinced he is. Uh, I'm not so sure, but... Um, uh, the second director, I'm not so sure there. Um, I've got my doubts, but the first one definitely did what you know, he did. And um, there's a question of, you know, can you separate the, on from, the art from the artist? I think it's up to the, the individual person. Um, if you can watch a film or read a book or look at a painting from someone who was problematic, like they did something really bad, like really terrible, they were, they were a terrible person. And still appreciate it and enjoy it. That's good. If you can't, if you feel, you know, you'd be supporting them, or you know, um, and it would be wrong to support them, and you you just can't get past that. That's also fine. I think it's completely up to the individual person whether or not you can separate the art from the artist. For me, I I can, but I can. And if you if you, you know, if you, you know you saw if you wouldn't watch these next two films, I completely understand that. So <laughs> get that out of the way, basically. Um, so we have uh, The Pianist, directed by Roman Polanski, which is a Holocaust drama. It's based on a real story. Uh, it was a real... It was a... Um, what's his name? Wadalizzo Spilsman. He was a real guy, um, like a piano player, who uh, went to the Holocaust and he wrote a book about it in this, based on the book. And Roman Polanski actually used some of his own... Because he also lived through the Holocaust. He's also a Holocaust survivor. Um, and he used some of his experiences in this as well. So it's very, um, it's a very accurate depiction of the Holocaust, I think. It's a very beautiful, very moving film, quite disturbing in places too, but a very, is an excellent film. Um, if you can, you know, obviously as a film, if you can separate from Polanski's personal life, which again, if you can't, that's fair enough, you know, that's fine. But, uh, if if you can if you can if you can put Polanski's personal life to one side, I think this is a very beautiful film, and uh, one I would recommend. Uh, this is the uh, optimum release. It's got no extra features. There was a re-release of this from in the Studio Canal collection, which were like these sort of digibook releases, but they're out of print now. You can't get them, so yeah, I couldn't get the version with extras, but uh, that's all right. Um, Uh, uh, the reason I got this is because uh, I figured there's probably not going to be a 4K because the whole Me Too movement's kind of um, tarnished Polanski's like I don't think anyone's going to go near his film like distributors are going to go near his films like do new home releases of them for, for a long time at least so I thought well might as well get you know get a copy <laughs> you know because it's not uh, probably not going to come with 4K for a very long time at least um also, this is the second print. The first pressing of this particular release was missing the... It's mostly in English, I guess, when the characters are speaking um, Polish. They're, they're speaking English, but they're meant to be speaking Polish. But when the Germans are speaking German, it's in German with subtitles. But the first pressing of this Blu-ray, the subtitles weren't there in the German scene, so you didn't know what they were saying. This is the... If you part, um, the, they fixed it, and when I, I checked it, and yeah, it has the English subtitles, when... There's no subtitles, just normal subtitles for the whole movie, but it does have them in the German 
vaccine. So you can buy this and you're not going to be worry about the. You can buy a new copy of this and you won't have to worry about missing the subtitles. Uh, again, I will probably, if I see the Studio Canal Collection version for a cheap price, I might get it just to have, you know, a better release of the film, but this will do for now. Uh, does need a new transfer because uh, it's quite an old HD transfer, but again, probably not going to see any new like releases of his films for a while yet. Uh, and then the next director, uh, Woody Allen's A Midsummer Night's Comedy. Um, yeah, I've not seen this. Uh, it was in HMV, had an offer on Arrow titles, where they're all $7.99. And uh, I went in looking to see if I could find a Woody Allen. I wanted Hannah and her sisters, but they didn't have it. And uh, I thought, well, this one sounded kind of interesting because, uh, and I hadn't seen it, so I thought, well, I'll get this. And um, yeah, it's, I think it's, I guess from the title, it's meant to be like a parody of A Midsummer Night's Dream. It's inspired by A Midsummer Night's Dream and Smiles of Summer Night, the Ingmar Bergman film. And uh, A Midsummer Night's Dream is one of my favorite Shakespeare plays. So I thought, Woody Allen meets Midsummer Night's Dream, that's quite. That sounds interesting to me. Um, it's also the first film uh, he and Mia Farrow worked together on. <laughs> uh, that's a bit awkward in hindsight. Um, never mind. Uh, doesn't have any extras like all Woody Allen films. He doesn't. He doesn't like extras on his films. He thinks the film should. He just wants the film uh, on the disc. I get. I mean, you get the trailers too, but um, he doesn't want like. He just wants people to watch the films. You know, with no extra information, which is fine. That is. You know, they're his films, he can do what he likes with them, that's fine by me. Um, but yeah, we'll, uh, I'll watch that soon. Next we have, uh, this is uh, The Likely Lads. This is a spin-off from uh, one of my favourite TV shows, Whatever Happened to The Likely Lads, which was a sequel to, basically in the, in the 60s there was a sitcom called The Likely Lads, which is about these two uh, young guys from Newcastle, which is where I live. And uh, then several years later, there was a sequel, Whatever Happened to the Likely Lads, which is basically when they, you know, they meet each other again years after the original series, like several years after the original series. And um, the original Likely Lads is, uh, it's, yeah, it's quite good, but Whatever Happened to the Likely Lads is like one of the best sitcoms ever. Like if you, um, I don't know if it's on any, uh, might be on the iPlayer or Britbox, but um, certainly it's on DVD. So if you want to watch it, Get the DVD box set and watch whatever happened to the Likely Lads. It's a great, great series. And this was the movie, the Likely Lads, the movie spin-off because um, there was this trend in the early 70s where there were film spin-offs of British sitcoms. And I don't know why it was a trend because, like, most of them are crap. This one was pretty good. This is one of the better ones. Um, and it's, a, you know, it's like the final installment, really. So if you watch the series you kind of have to watch this to sort of you know it's like the 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 end i guess kind of and uh yeah it's quite good um also has um i don't know she's not on the cover but it has uh, oh there is has uh mary tam who was uh the first romana in doctor who for any of you whovians watching um i used to be a whovian i'm, a, I'm not anymore but <laughs> yeah um but what's in the reason why i wanted to get this is because i used to have this on dvd and I would have been fine with the DVD because you know it's, it's uh, there. But uh, this has uh, two previously lost episodes from the original '60s series. Basically, a lot of TV in the '60s uh, is missing because they would uh, they would just wipe tapes. They wouldn't bother keeping copies of them because it was like you show a, a show and it would air once, and then you wouldn't you know you weren't going to air it again, especially. When you got to the 70s and it was like, well, we're not going to, you had color TV. So it was like, well, the BBC were like, well, we're not going to show any of our old black mic programs. So why bother keeping them? So they junked a lot of them and only about, I think about half of the episodes of The Likely Lad survive. Um, I don't know how many, there's like eight or something in the, previously, eight of them, I think, survived. And they were in the box set, like the DVD I have. And uh, then... Between then and now, they found two of them, and Network, I guess, we'll put this out in Blu-ray, um, they put them on here as a special feature, which is nice, because it means they don't have to buy it. I'm glad they didn't just, like, uh, release the whole original series again and make it buy all the other episodes to get these two. Um, so it has 
I don't think there are any other extras. No, it doesn't have any extras, but still, the two previously missing episodes, that's a really cool extra feature. And it does come with a booklet. It's nice. Some uh, production notes. <laughs> so, yeah, definitely watch uh, watch Whatever Happened to the Light Lads and uh, watch this to kind of see the, the final installment. Great series. Uh, and that was actually... No, it wasn't. It was uh, that was also seven ninety nine and HMV on offer. These next two were in a two for thirteen offer. This one I was surprised actually because BFI there's a BFI release and BFI releases don't tend to be in those kinds of offers. Uh, it's a, a double. The Soviet influence is the name of the set, and it's a double feature of Battleship Potemkin and Drifters. Battle, I got this for Battleship Potemkin. The, uh, the Russian silent film, because it's one of those films, I've not seen it, and it's one of those, like, you know, films where if you're a film geek, like I am, you have to kind of see it, because it's quite an influential film. But Drifters is a, it's a documentary. It's also a silent film, it's a documentary uh, made in Britain. And the reason they're both in this double feature is because when Battleship Potemkin was originally released in the UK, it was in a double feature with Drifters, so I guess they decided to put them together, which is kind of cool. You can recreate the original UK release. Uh, uh, so it's basically uh, it has the Blu-ray and the DVD, and again the booklet, like booklet. Uh, it's got some decent special features too. It's got both films in standard def and high def. Battleship Temkins presented in a new restoration by the Film Museum Berlin and Partners accompanied by the uh, 1926 Edward Meersel score. Drifters presented in a new HD transfer tinted and toned as originally intended with a score by uh, Jason Singh. Uh, Grant and Troller, which is a another sort of short which is a short film by the director, uh, John Grierson, who directed Drifters. Um, trade Tattoo, uh, Celebratory Animation. So it's an animation. Um, North Sea, a dramatic reconstruction of the seafarer's battle with the elements narrated by GPO Film Unit and the booklet. So it's kind of cool that um, you get some short films. And, uh, oh, Michael Brook. Um, it's got a book with some essays. One of them's by Michael Brook, who um, I used to talk to. He used to be on. Uh, he's, in, he's not. He didn't post there anymore, but he used to post on uh, Rhubarb's forums, and I had a few conversations with him. Nice guy. Really, uh, really knows his stuff about movies. So, yeah, I think he still posts on the Criterion forum. I don't know. Uh, I'm not really on that. I just I've, I've looked at it sometimes. But yeah, definitely, if you're a film geek. You know, if you're interested in the history of cinema, you have to see Battleship Potemkin at least once. Although uh, my film lecturer at college uh, told me he, he thought um, he preferred, um, what was the other one Eisenstein did? October. Which uh, I'll have to get a copy of that too because um, he showed me a clip of it and it looked really good. So, yeah. Uh, and the other film I got in the 2 for £13 pounds offer in HMV, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, the uh, with the exclusive HMV exclusive cover. Um, when it says exclusive for HMV, it's just this cover, like the actual disc you can get in. Like, there's a regular release. Uh, I like this cover, though, because it has the original artwork. It's the same underneath. Um, yeah, I, one of, this is uh, one of my favourite films, actually. I had it on DVD for a while, uh, but I sold it to get this. Um, so uh, I only just got... Well, I just got, you know... <laughs> I sold it a while ago because I was planning on getting the Blu-ray, but I never got round to it till the other week, so, yeah. Um, do there being an announcement of uh, this on 4K, because uh, I, I just bought the Blu-ray. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, it's nice to have. Um, yeah, I had the DVD with the uh, John Hughes commentary. John Hughes did a commentary on the original DVD of the release of this. It was the only audio commentary he, he ever did, and for some reason it's not on the Blu-ray. I don't know why, you know. Uh, maybe some sort of rights issue, I have no idea, but uh, you do get some extras, uh, getting the class together, the cast of Ferris Bueller's Day Off, the making of Ferris Bueller's Day Off, who is Ferris Bueller, the world according to Ben Stein, that's the guy at the beginning who says Bueller, Bueller. 
um, Vintage Ferris Bueller, The Lost Tapes, class album. Yeah. So, yeah, really good film, really funny, uh, basically about a guy, Matthew Broderick. He's like a high school student and he decides to take the day off. And, uh, yeah, it's a really good film. Definitely uh, recommend this classic from the 80s. I think my mum said she saw this at the cinema, which uh, <laughs> when it came out, she really likes it too, I think. Uh, next we have um, a film, I think, I don't remember when it came out. I think it was sometime in, uh, I guess, June or June, this month or last month. Um, actually, did I mention this in one of my previous updates? I don't know. I'm going to mention it now, just uh, you know, just uh, just in case. But um, Minari, the uh, uh, it's a uh, uh, um, Korean American family, so it's an American movie, but it's mostly in it's partly in Korean. So it's like a foreign language movie, but it was made in America, I think. Um, yeah, uh, haven't seen it. Heard it was good. It was nominated for a lot of Oscars, and I pre-ordered it when it came up for pre-order, and uh, yeah. Uh, looking forward to seeing it. The UK disc doesn't have any extras, which is weird because the American disc did. So if you can hear the rain outside, it's it's raining at the minute. Um, but anyway, yeah, but that's fine. I don't mind. Not. Um, I mean, I I talk about like stuff not having extras. To be honest, and most films I don't watch them. It's just nice to have them, but I don't really watch them. To be honest, I don't really have a lot of time to watch them. You know, because I'm busy doing other things. Uh, yeah, uh, I'd rather use the time I have to watch another film than like the extra features. So. But if it's a favourite, favourite film, I like to have the extra features on there. But yeah, it's fine. But yeah, looking forward to watching this. Uh, I'd say it's a blind buy, but I've heard it's really good. Next we have a, a TV series. I used to have this on DVD. Um, but uh, I saw those DVDs a while ago and uh, I got the Blu-ray. I have them on Blu-ray second hand. Uh, quite cheap. We have um, Life on Mars, Series 1 and Series 2. I uh, bought Series 1 in CEX, and uh, then I think I just I went online to get Series 2, because these are out of print. They're not r super rare, but, you know, they're not, like, you're not, like, brand new. You, you can't just walk into a hitch and being get them, so you have to get them, like, chicken and hand. So I thought, well, then the DVDs are quite common. The Blu-rays are less common. They're not super rare, but, you know, you're not going to, like, find loads of copies of them. So you do have to get them when you can. So I just ordered the same series online, just to save me the... Uh, hassle of uh, looking for it, but yeah. Um, basically, it's a cop show. Basically, um, John Sim, this guy, he's like a police officer in 2006, which is when the series first aired, and uh, he gets into a car. He has a car accident, and then he wakes up in 1973, and it's like, uh, you know, and he's like. He doesn't know whether he's in a coma or he's dead or he has actually travelled back in time. Um, and yeah, it's a really good, it's basically like a throwback to the old cop shows from the 70s, like the Sweeney and stuff like that, but with the lens of, you've got a character from modern day, or then present day, you know, so, uh, looking at it, you know, like, um, it's, 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 really good, it's a really good series, it's a good crime series, and it's got a really good sci-fi twist. It's a really, really brilliant series, it was very popular when it came out. Um, like I say, you can get the DVDs quite, uh, the company who put these out, Contender, I think they went out of business, so you can't get these new anymore, but the DVDs are very common. In fact, uh, I don't know if I would recommend the Blu-ray so much, they take up less space, because the DVDs are in these sort of digipath things, so they're a bit wider. I wanted them because they're in a more durable format, but here's the, uh, um, something you, you need to know first is, um, first of all, um, some of the there's a lot of being set in the seventies. There's a lot of like seventies music, pop songs, and that you know rock songs and stuff. Some of the songs that they used in the original TV airings had to be changed in the home video version. They didn't just like use generic music. They actually just used a different song for the same period. That was to keep it license. So if you haven't seen the show, if you didn't see the show when it aired, you would notice. But it is they they are the original that they have been altered. Also these. Even though the show was, it was shot on film, uh, it was edited uh, in standard definition because HD TV channels weren't that common. So a lot of shows in like the mid noughties were like still just shot on or edited on in SD video. So these aren't true HD, they are upscales. 
they do look a little bit better than the DVDs, um, just because the you know, Blu-ray there's more space on a Blu-ray disc, so the less compression, and they can fit more of them on a disc than the DVD. So the instead of being four DVDs, it's two Blu-rays. Hence why the cases are smaller. Um, I wanted these because again they are slightly better than the DVDs and Blu-ray is more durable format. And to save space on my DVDs at thicker cases. But if you just want the show, you're not that bothered about it being on Blu-ray. You know, you can just get the DVDs and the quality is about the same. So you're not getting them in true HD. Be aware of that. So, yeah. They are on, I think they're on iPlayer at the minute. So if you haven't seen the show and you don't want to, like, spend money on it, watch it on iPlayer. It's, you probably really like it. And if you do, you can get the DVDs very cheap secondhand. Or if you do a bit of digging, you can find the Blu-rays quite cheap too. But uh, again, there's not a lot of difference between them quality-wise. Unless you're like really like picky like I am. Uh, although I'm not that picky sometimes. Well, I own some releases that are bad. And uh, I can tell they're bad, but I still own them. I didn't, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not as picky as some people, but I'm a little picky. And uh, last but not least, we have... I think this is the last thing I bought. Um, last Blu-ray at least. Um, Waltz with Bashir. This is a it's a documentary. It's animated. It's an animation animated documentary, and it's um came out in two thousand and eight. I watched it for the first time this year, and I thought it was a brilliant, like film. It's uh the director Ari Fulman. He was an Israeli, like he was in the Israeli army in the eighties, and it's basically him recalling this, he has this recurring, um, he can't, basically he realises he can remember, he can't remember anything, about, he was in the 1982 Liban war, Libanon war, and he fought in that, and he can't remember anything about it, so it's basically like in, you know, him, like sort of a documentary about him, trying to learn, you know, think, why, why don't I remember anything about this? But it's, it's animated, so it's really interesting. And the animation style is really unique. And, uh, yeah, it's a very, very, very good film. It's nominated for an Oscar. So uh, it's two discs. It has the Blu-ray and the... Well, the Blu-ray and a bonus DVD with uh, special features on. So, yeah. In, uh, it's in Hebrew. Because it's really, it's yeah, it's a brilliant film. Really recommend this. Uh, I got it second hand. I got it on eBay for like three quid. So yeah, uh, absolutely uh, brilliant film. And uh, that's the end of the video. Um, this will probably be the last one about um, movies. I've got a few books coming. Uh, over the next sort of couple of weeks, so I might do a video with them, but I'm not really buying anything because uh, uh, there's a. I'm not really buying anything in August because there is the. I'm saving up for the Star Trek four film, like one to four box set on 4K, uh, which comes out in early September. So I'm saving my money in August. For, I'm not really going to buy anything in August. Because I'm saving money for that because it's like 80 quid. So, um, but yeah, probably won't be uh, any film related videos till September. So, yeah. But um, anyway, thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video.